What's up, guys? I just got finished watching The Magic Pill, which is a documentary. I found it on Netflix. It's probably other places as well. And it looks into diet as the magic pill, is what I think is kind of implied. Although there's probably some other ways you could take the title of this movie into account. So it mainly talks about diet and that traditionally our societies before the modern societies we live in now were, you know, hunter-gatherers. Largely, we hunted our food, we ate meat, we ate fats, and the fattier the food, the, the better off the energy, basically. And uh, they talked about a lot of stuff in there. They followed a lot of different people groups. They followed a lot of different, all over the world, people from all over the world. Um, and what we should really have learned is if we follow the food pyramid, this is in the movie, most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is from the movie. Go watch it first if, and then come back, you know, and see if you agree with my review or don't agree. And... Anyways, so we have really found out, tons of people have found out that low fat makes you fat because sugars and carbs make you put on weight, make you retain water, make you all kinds of bad things that should be readily apparent. So they talk about the diabetic epidemic. There's so many people out there struggling with diabetes, pre-diabetes at earlier and earlier stages. I remember, you know, learning about some of these ultra marathon runners, people that find out in their early 30s that they're pre-diabetic because they were taught carb, carb, more carbs. That's the best energy for you. That's what you need to run those marathons. We've got a heart disease epidemic out there, which may be related to as soon as we started changing those dietary guidelines in America. If you look at old, old cookbooks, if you can get your hands on one, maybe at a library or maybe one that has been reprinted, all they used to do was add butter, add lard, and add fat to so many other recipes. Like, so much was based on those things. It was just so much fat ingredients. You know, I guess one of the things it brings up in the movie is there's so much money being made on soybeans and it's so easy for them to show up with lobbyists to governments all over the world and say, pass this, pass this, pass that, pass this, because here, here's a little bit of money. And the breakdown is that the food pyramid we know of in the movie, they say, just turn it completely upside down. And there you have it. Basically, you will have a ketogenic diet, low carb, high fat, you know. And you have this big base where you should be eating good healthy fats that are sustainable, like eggs and pasture-raised fatty meats and sustainably caught fish. And this woman brings it up. She's, she talks about real food is something that swam in water or walked on the ground or grew in the dirt. If it's not any of those things, you shouldn't be eating it. And, yeah, there's that other saying, if man makes it, don't eat it. And in the beginning of this documentary, they go through and clear out people's cupboards. And there's nothing but processed foods. And some of them, every single ingredient is an unnatural non-food. <laughs> It's uh, kind of ridiculous. It's it's crazy. Uh, the magic pill could also be taken as the search that our society has gone to the extent of trying to find cures for all these illnesses. And, you know, what was it? The father of medicine? Uh... Hippocrates, who said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be thy food. But we've steered clear from that. Like, f we couldn't get more away from that at all. And so we keep searching for this magic pill. And there's a lot of people out there that would say it's com 
it's a complete farce that every single search for the cure, whatever, whatever it may be, is just a big scheme to make money off of foolish people who won't do their own research. One of the ladies in here is, has got cancer, and she was talking about that. She was like, there's nothing different about me that anybody else could do except for I found the research. And nobody wants to do that. People would rather go watch Lost in Space or the new Avengers movie. And, you know, I enjoy entertainment. I go enjoy those things too. But, yeah, uh, Jim Rohn, a motivational speaker that I'm very fond of, he talked about how people work 40 hours a day for someone else's dream and come home and don't have any time to spend on their own personal dream to research for their own personal health to put money into their own personal dream or whatever. And that's that's pretty wrong. I don't I don't think that's the way it should be. Uh, one of the great parts of this film also is a a vegan, a woman who talks about she went from the standard American diet all the way straight to veganism because she didn't agree with the slaughterhouses and the farming practices that are rampant across our world today. And I can agree, like, it should be way more ethically done in a lot of ways. So her journey into veganism was, all right, I'm going to grow my own vegetables and grow my own garden and have all these things that I want to eat and she started going to the farmer tractor supply store and she looked around and all these fertilizers come from decomposed animal matter. So for her to get the nutrients into her soil, for her to have healthy vegetables, something had to die. And then she realized, this is terrible. I'm not going to buy that stuff. I've got to just go get some chickens and she got chickens and those chickens ended up eating all the bugs and worms and things of that nature that would go back into the soil that would nurture the soil and help her vegetables grow and at first she was just like I'm a terrible person (laughs) I wanted to get away from all this death and just because I looked at a plate of lettuce I thought it was a lot that it was way more humane but it's, this is a great documentary for helping people understand like a true process of where food comes from and what is food and what isn't food. Yet also, um, getting back to that cookbook thing about old, old, old school cookbooks, there's old advertisements in old school magazines about, see, this happy family in, in these magazines I'm talking about, they're so old they were just drawings of happy family portraits whatever you want to call it and it said why are they so happy they eat lard and yeah i can attest to that i've been on a ketogenic diet for over a year and lost a ton of weight and feel great more energy more mental clarity and recently since i added more minerals into my diet i've also noticed i'm a lot sharper i think of a lot better ideas i've got a lot better strategies i've got a lot more patience with my children. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I talked about this a little bit, but without trace minerals, you know, they're not in our soil because there's no, there's no life living on the soil anymore. It's just one crop and they spray it and don't allow bugs into it to add nutrients from wherever they've been. They don't allow, um, non-annual plants, non-plants that will grow up into the soil and then die and decompose and nurture the soil to be anywhere in those fields that our food comes from. And yeah, all the sprays, there's so many different sprays out there and a lot of people don't want that. You know, you want organic food. You want stuff raised on a pasture. I I just really appreciate that part of the movie. And it talks about, uh, or that woman that's vegan that started raising her own vegetables and stuff. She seemed like she was a little bit high strung and, uh, never mind, whatever. We're going to move on. 
So anyways, if you've got a high carb diet, if you've got a high sugar diet, if you consume, you know, sugary beverages, guess what? Parasites feed on can on on sugars. Cancer feeds on sugars. If you have too much sugars and carbs, you're most likely more likely to develop diabetes or prediabetes. Guess what? If you get diabetes, you're more likely to develop dementia before you pass away. So yeah, that that slow trend. I saw my grandmother had diabetes. She ended up getting cancer. She ended up having dementia. She passed away and didn't know what was going on. She didn't know where she was. I mean, her... My aunt talked about her last couple of days and it was a scary thing. Nobody wants to think about not being there to say goodbye to your loved ones and to have your complete brain taken over by this, these stages of these diseases and stuff. And yeah, Dr. Bruce Fife, Fife and his coconut oil miracle talked about even just introducing a bit of fats like coconut oil anywhere up to three to four tablespoons may be optimal for helping people reverse dementia, which... Uh, that would be amazing because, yeah, nobody wants to check out early, right? If you're still alive, you want to be able to talk to the people you love and have those people say their goodbyes and reminisce and, you know, have some good closure to your life for everybody. But, yeah, if you're – I don't know, guys. Look, that's just – that's what the documentary kind of laid out. One of the diabetic ladies in here who started the diet and several weeks in, she talked about how ashamed she was that she was actually a nurse and nurses don't learn much about nutrition. So if she had the knowledge, then maybe she could have prevented her diabetes and all the problems she had with over being obese and overweight and stuff. Uh, another major part of this is it followed a Professor Timothy Noakes from South Africa who sent out a tweet basically giving health advice of a low-carb, high-fat diet and then ended up facing a trial before the government for wrongdoing. And I won't spoil the ending of that if you haven't seen it, but it's a good ending. So guess what happened? Now, the other thing about the low-carb, high-fat diet Switzerland actually adopted pretty much that kind of uh, national diet for that area. And they've done that since like 2014. Uh, they followed a lot of autistic children in this documentary. And these children end up, some of them who are nonverbal, ended up be, becoming very verbal, being able to talk in complete sentences and talk about what they love, what they fear, what they like, what they don't like. And it was pretty amazing. And I've also found there is a book out there called Healing the Symptoms Known as Autism. It's called The Protocol for Healing the Symptoms Known as Autism. I believe I've got a video on one of my uh, playlists for that. But anyways, so this theory is... Uh, also related to the Calker protocol, which is a protocol for autism, I believe. And it's basically an anti-parasite protocol. So if you're starving off parasites, um, sources of food, namely sugar for the most part, then it'd make tons of sense that these autistic children would recover and... Also, if uh, your your brain runs on fats way better than anything else, then a low carb, high fat diet makes so much more sense for for these autistic kids as well. Um, it's amazing that Noakes, pretty much at the end or sometime in his trial, just re reports to them, "Look, scientific studies have proven that what we've been doing is insanity. The same things we're doing over and over and over." We're a part of a failed model. Globally, our medical model 
fails us left and right. That's what I experienced. That's why I ended up searching out natural health cures. That's why I did my own personal research was because I had my own health issues that I didn't want to take a pill for the rest of my life. It's difficult because not only would people rather watch Lost in Space or something like that, but they would also rather take a single pill that can cure 30 years of depression and diarrhea at the same time. But only one pill. I mean, thank God there's people that are actually willing to look into one pill for two things, as a matter of fact. I mean, the thing is, I think our our bodies are amazingly designed to heal themselves. And when we give them actual food, most likely they will heal themselves. Uh, you know, barring some, you know, genetic disformation. And, but that's the thing, too. Like, they talk about high blood pressure runs in African-American communities, etc., well, guess what? If you go back to uh, Africa in native tribes, uh, I've heard that there's actually no incidence of high blood pressure. So something doesn't add up there, right? So many people talk about how after they started this keto diet, even the woman who was using the keto diet as a cancer treatment or an adjunct to her chemotherapy. I don't know. They didn't really clarify whether or not she was doing chemo, but she definitely looked like she had done some because it didn't look like she had any hair. But she said, I don't get sick anymore now that I'm on the ketogenic diet. I'm not sick one bit. I've got the grandkids who come and see me and they cough right in my face and I don't get sick at all. There was another woman who lost a bunch of weight. Her skin looked way better than it did in the beginning of this program. And she said she's not sick anymore. She said she's not dealing with her asthma anymore. Uh, She says she hasn't taken antibiotics in a long time. She's got more energy. She's got more clarity. She is healthy. A lot of the things she just couldn't do before. And she is extremely healthy now. And happy. I could, I could totally attest to some of those same things, you know, it's, it's awesome too, that they showed the, um, African, no, it was an Aboriginal tribe, I believe, jumping on trampolines. And they, uh, this guy who first found this one tribe talked about how back in the seventies, he saw them and every single one of them was like ripped and looked great and very healthy. And as soon as they started switching over to the Westerners diet, those people who brought the gospel to them, the minis- the missionaries, uh, as soon as they switched over to those diets, no bueno, man, everybody started dying from heart disease and diabetes. And they were talking about it like before then, what, what did you guys, what did they die of? And they're like accidents, hippos, I don't know, jaguars falling out of a tree, stuff like that. Those are the things that took people's lives. But it's all these other ones now. You know, boy, that, you know, my mom, she's type 2 diabetic, and she came and visited us. She lives a couple states away from here. And she came and visited us. She bought insulin because she forgot to bring it. And since her insurance already paid for it once, she came out, showed me the receipt. It was like $350. And I was just like shaking my head. was like, no, you don't need that. Go, just go ask them if you can return it. Just say, never mind, don't need it. And so she went and returned it. She came back home and I showed her that we had Jimena on the shelf here. And Jimena is also known as Wonderberry. It's pretty amazing that <clears throat> this wonderberry, if you eat it in its natural form, in a whole food form, and then eat some food afterwards, it completely changes the taste of your food. But anyways, back to the story. So Jimena is also really good for lowering blood sugar. And I find if I carb out too much and I start feeling nauseous or a headache or a stomach ache, something like that, then if I just take a couple Jimena or bitter melon and lower my blood pressure that way, or blood sugars that way, then easily all that pain, all that stuff's gone. But anyways, back to my mom. She had blood sugar levels that were pretty high because she still hasn't really tackled an anti-diabetes diet, which tons of people in this documentary tackle diabetes, get over it, don't need to take insulin anymore. 
and the Gemina lowered her blood sugar levels in 24 hours. She was back down to normal levels. And I mean, that's great because Gemina is so inexpensive. And I was, I was talking to her. I was like, I bet you could save money because I bet your copay for your office visit, I bet your prescription pay, all those things are way more expensive than a bottle of Gemina. And depending on how you eat and if you go for walks and stuff, you know, those things can be natural ways to help you beat diabetes. So I'm all about low carb, high fat. I've been on a ketogenic diet for a while now. I think it's way more close to nature. I think it's more close to what the creator intended, you know, what our bodies need. I think just all around, it's better. There's nothing, I don't even want to go back to higher carbs. I don't want to go back to eating sugars. So many sugar substitutes that I've found are great. I like, really, really enjoy erythritol. Stevia, upon occasion, in certain things, tastes great. I don't, in the bitterness part of stevia, it's awesome too, because that will stimulate digestion. It's a sweet that stimulates digestion and helps me produce more bile to digest other things. So I would definitely suggest you guys go out there and watch The Magic Pill and see if it's on YouTube or watch it on Netflix and check those other ones. But anyways, guys, stay healthy. It's a great documentary. Definitely suggest you check it out. And I hope there's a lot more people becoming woke up to becoming awakened to the benefits of a low carb, high fat diet, the benefits of eating real food. So stay healthy guys.